What would you say, and I kind of have a hunch as what it's going to be, but what do you say the actual needle movers are? I mean, you mentioned caffeine. I mean, that's probably the most studied ergogenic aid that there probably is. Like, right, caffeine, yeah, I mean, straight up caffeine from coffee or tea or whatever. Yeah, hundred percent. I, Yeah. Um, if I'm looking at my own life and what I'm doing, there'll be uh, protein, and I'll consider that in there because I take that as a you know powder a lot of days. Um, there will be uh, creatine. And putting that in there for a lot of different reasons. Performance is how it started. Now it's shifting more to cognition. Yeah. Um, and that's constantly there for me as well. How many grams usually for you? Uh, so I was at five for a long time, but some of the newer data looking at getting in your brains a little bit higher. Yeah. So it's, it's ebbing up again. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at 10 to 15 now and it's yeah. noticeably different. Yeah. 10 yeah. is, is where I'm uh, at these days. Um, and the other one that, that is interesting for us is that I was, always someone who didn't think collagen worked, hmm. but then we did some studies on it. And so now actually I include collagen in my um, uh, daily. After today's video, I put a link down below for 10% off of urolithin A from Timeline Nutrition. Urolithin A is what is called a postbiotic. It's something that is extracted, typically in this case from pomegranates, and it's a compound that induces what is called mitophagy. So it encourages the mitochondria to essentially go through a recycling. Now, MitoPure, which is the patented version of urolithin A, has a lot of clinical studies published on it. Very legit stuff. I've talked about it with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. If you're looking at trying to get sort of the, I guess you could call it the autophagy of the mitochondria, mitophagy, and improve mitochondrial health, potentially better aging, all these things, urolithin A is probably on the forefront when it comes down to the emerging promising compounds. Really interesting stuff, not to mention there is evidence to support that it can help protect against a visceral fat accumulation as well, which is hugely important. So that link down below gets you 10% off of Timeline's Urolithin A. At the very least, at least check out the link and read a little bit more about it because it's not just Thomas DeLauer talking. This is very real stuff. So link is below this video in the top line of the description. What is a, I'm, I'm really curious on that research because like, does, yeah. like what is a, what did it look like? Was it a pre-workout thing? Was it uh... Yeah. So what we did was we looked at the state of literature and, the, and specifically for joint pain. And so we were coming off a time when uh, glucosamine, glucosamine chondroitin and things were the most popular supplements around for joint pain at the time. And as you know, like the literature was pretty weak there for efficacy. Um, and so collagen became the next marker uh, the next player to, to get into that space. And we looked at how long these studies were, and most of them were m not long, maybe at the longest, like three months of length in the joint pain studies, but ma many of them were not even that long. Um, and so because uh, I'm in the same category, I wanted to study people who were middle-aged active individuals, and I also wanted to see what it would do over time over a longer period of time. So we studied zero, 10, or 20 grams of collagen for nine months. Um, longest collagen study I've ever seen come out. And that nine-month study took like four, almost five years to pull off. It's just a very long study. Um, and yeah, so we looked at those different lengths, and we studied that for uh, having people come in uh, monthly for nine months to have different tests done, different surveys administered, different range of motion things done. Um, and what we found at the end of all that was that um, there was some efficacy to 10 and 20. What was interesting, and we still don't know why, 10 seemed to be the most effective. Huh. And at the end of that, the people who benefited most were those who exercised the most. So there was like almost a threshold where if you were over, I think it was only 150 minutes of exercise per week, it tended to work better for you in terms of feelings of joint pain. And then when joint pain went down, we, the, the questionnaires we gave that um, said improved uh, mood state were up because your pain's lower, yeah, pain's lower you yeah. feel better. So that right there um, was enough uh, for me from our data to, to include that in a daily, um, daily use. Yeah, I, no I noticeably feel different when I have collagen. What have you seen the, the literature on um, like having uh, whey protein post workout sort of reducing collagen protein synthesis and like by adding collagen back in basically you're like I don't know if that's active or valid or not but when you're looking at sort of uh, 
basically having a whey protein shake without collagen was actually reducing collagen protein synthesis. Um, it was a pretty small study, so I don't know if there's merit to that. So I don't know if you've seen anything on that. No, the, the, the ones I'm aware of are a lot of people pitted against whey, but for muscle. Yeah. And that's like, that's, that's just two like different the, things. Yeah. It's a wrong yeah. comparison. So in that case, no collagen's useless in terms of muscle growth. Yeah. Um, now there it's confusing because you know, weighs this complete protein and has a really good amino acid profile. Um, why is that not improving joint pain or why is it not being looked at for yeah. joint pain? So there may be some crossover, but there ours wasn't the only study. There's other studies that show joint pain benefits for active individuals, including some in younger active people like college age people that still have an, even without joint pain had improvements in, in any kind of feelings of, of pain on um, total body and joint pain. So, yeah, there's enough there for me to, to use it based on our data. And before that, I was like, ah, I don't think this is going to do anything. It's, I mean, that would bring it to like something that I've sort of changed my perspective on, which has been like, you know, how you feel really counts for something, right? Like that's, um, I went through a, a long period of time where it's just like, if it wasn't, if there wasn't the data to support it, then, you know, it was like, but then it got to a point where there's some things that just seem to feel right for me. And maybe it's a placebo effect. And I feel like that's where I, I like sort of loosened the grip on that. Where, And I think just the very nature of loosening the grip is probably what's doing the most work, right? You're not like yeah. trying to isolate everything or, or proving to yourself that this works and this doesn't work. And you're just sort of like, you know what? No, I feel good when I do this or I feel good when I have collagen. And just because there's not a ton of data to back it all up, like it's doing something for me and whether that's placebo or not, it it's doing something. I mean, that's the first thing we do when we work with athletes or people coming in for sports nutrition um, consultations is I'll say, what are you doing? And then I say, how do you feel? And if you tell me you love X, Y, and Z, I'm, great, go for it. Because yeah. the last thing I want to do is implement something or tell you something's not working, and then you yeah. have some kind of mental problem with this. So yeah, that's a, a, a an easy way to look at. It. It's like, how does it make me feel? And again, it could be placebo for sure, no doubt about it. But we did placebo controlled trials. We had a, a benefit with this ten grams of collagen um, taken over nine months. That's so wild. Uh, yeah, it's like the that's the first that I've really heard of it too. Because a lot of it's been kind of some rodent model stuff and stuff that is like not that strong. So this is, it's promising for me because I always notice a difference when I use collagen. Like yeah. there's something that's there. You know, we're an applied physiology lab. So we do work in nutrition and exercise to see what kind of outcomes make an impact on people. So mechanistically, there's some really cool work in collagen from Keith Barr and his lab, you know, looking at taking it pre-exercise, a time when you have blood flow increase. Yeah, so it's like the you, jump rope study, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, he, he's done a ton of other work. He's like the main one doing that in that space. And so, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting model. It, it, in this purpose for joint pain, it would, you want to have that um, probably preloaded. We did not do it that way. We just gave it daily. But we perhaps would have had a better outcome if even – even better outcome if we had uh, done it pre-exercise and if we had combined it with other micronutrients. So it doesn't necessarily just go into the same like labral pool. I mean, it's like because it's a collagen peptide, does it like trigger a potential like signaling mechanism where it's increasing collagen uptake itself? Because I mean, you get some players out there will just say, hey, well, it's just X amino acids. It's just going to go into the labral pool and the amino acid yeah. pool. Um, I mean, clearly that doesn't entirely seem to be the case. Yeah, we actually don't know a lot about it the data that um we lean on or where somehow you have these hydroxyproline um structures that are getting through intact and so there's a uh, one study that i'm aware of where uh, an amino acid chain that was nine amino acids in length got th is getting through the gut hmm. um, and into the system that's not usually the yeah. case you just a dye tripeptide at the most uh, that would actually get into the blood and these are coming intact and their structures unique um it, that's where a lot of the science is leaning on for the special effect. But, uh, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I don't know that that's exactly yeah. the case because our study was much more applied than that in terms of what we're looking at. Now, we have a whole bunch of blood we're looking at. And uh, the doctoral student who ran that, her name is Shaloa Kiyakovsky, and she's fabulous. And she is now running um, a whole slew of bloods to see what's going on and see if we can tease out any mechanistic point in terms of why this is happening, why the doses might be doing what they're doing. That's cool. I mean, that's, that's the best that I'm getting out of this interview. Cause like I, I get hung up on them. Like I feel better when I have collagen, something's doing something. Right. And, uh, and then I just get hung up on, well, maybe it's, maybe it's not really yeah. doing much, but now I, now I feel more comfortable with it. <laughs>